We need unity, we need pressure, we need sanctions, we need uh, weapon support. The mayor of Kyiv asking more help. This as U.S. officials now say there are credible reports of deliberate attacks on civilians by Russia. The United Nations says more than 300 civilians, including children, have been killed. They warn the toll is likely to go much higher. And then there was this today in Ukraine, an urgent effort underway to save works of art displayed in museums. Many of these pieces already surviving two world wars. Here in Sacramento, just hours ago, hundreds rallied at the state capitol in support of Ukraine. This time, state and local leaders joined the stage. New at 11, ABC 10's Van 2 was at the rally earlier tonight, asking officials and Ukrainians what should happen next. Well, this was the second large Sunday night rally in support of Ukraine at the state capitol. And tonight, local and state leaders taking to the stage, addressing the diaspora here. <laughs> Spring for Ukraine as Russia's invasion of the country enters its 12th day, shelling of residential areas stepping up. Anatoly Gavriluk of Antelope says he fears for his family back home. You know, my morning starts not with coffee anymore. It's just making sure they're still alive, you know, texting them, you know, checking the emails, you know. What's, what, what happened? What's next? Gavriluk is joining calls for a no-fly zone over Ukraine, a move ruled out by NATO over concerns that it would lead to a larger war. But he says he feels comforted seeing California state and local leaders at Sunday's demonstration, a show of bipartisan support. Hey, no-fly zone in Ukraine. Assembly members Kevin McCarthy, Jim Cooper, and State Senator Jim Nielsen joining in on the chant. Among other local leaders, Sacramento Mayor Daryl Steinberg. If Ukrainians need to come to this country, uh, we will welcome them with open arms, no question about it. Steinberg says he endorses a ban of imports of Russian oil and additional sanctions on the country. But when it comes to calling for a no-fly zone, he said there are factors to consider. The no-fly zone is the right call. The question is, who enforces it? I think the 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 best way for America to avoid um, an even broader war and also do everything possible to help the Ukrainian people is to continue to send arms. For some Ukrainian Americans like Gavriluk and the Ukrainian American House, which organized the demonstration, they say they don't see an alternative and continue to push for a no-fly zone to stop Russian forces. If, they, if they're going to get Ukraine, who's next? You know, he's never going to stop. A dictator is never going to stop. They're going to go in. And those other countries, they have to realize they're going to be next. And amid all of the uncertainty, the California leaders who were here tonight said that they would do everything within their power to help the Ukrainian people. Thanks, Van. As fighting intensifies in Ukraine, more Ukrainians in California are heading to the front lines. A 27-year-old doing a medical residency in the U.S. and staying in San Francisco is now heading back to Ukraine, saying he hopes to use his medical training to serve his homeland. My profession is to heal the people and to bring the life. And uh, so that is my major goal and aim. And uh, my grandma is staying home right now. And uh, <laughs> I know it's uh, kind of, I mean, she made a few uh, Molotov cocktails in her balcony before she used to feed the pigeons. The Ukrainian consulate in San Francisco says more than 1,000 people have reached out to them, interested in going to Ukraine to aid the wartime effort. Yesterday, right here on ABC 10, we checked in with Ukrainian staff members from the Spring of Life Church in Orangevale. They are now at the Ukrainian-Poland border helping refugees. You see the tents all around over here and over there. We help them a lot, serve them, help to unpack things, uh, bring some mattresses, buying food, so just support them uh, spiritually. They've been working alongside the military, law enforcement and missionaries who have arrived from Germany. A new information tonight, is the U.S. accepting Ukraine's refugees? According to the Associated Press, the answer is yes, but the White House says for now most refugees want to stay in Europe. The United States has already given $54 million in food and other assistance to people inside Ukraine and has pledged to send more. The Biden administration also says it's offering temporary protected status to Ukrainians already in the country. As far as if United States can absorb a new wave of refugees, experts believe it's possible, but it will not be easy. 
Meanwhile, local groups continue to organize to send support to Ukraine. Among them, Marantha Church in North Highlands. They held a clothing drive after today's morning and evening services. To find ways you can help and donate, we have more information on our website, abc10.com.